We were by the river. The fire was burning and the flames were shaking. The bells rang, letting us know it was 11 o'clock at night. Suddenly, it all went dead silent. Nobody laughed, nobody talked. We could only hear the rustling of a cold wind. Then, a woman came from the woods. We heard a painful and muffled cry. Oh, my children. Do you know who we're talking about? We are talking about La Llorona, the weeping woman. A woman with a ghost-like appearance, dressed in white with long dark hair, who floats in the air with a soft veil covering her horrifying face. She comes from the west and goes towards the north, wandering and crying around the streets. La Llorona is a ghost in the Latin American folklore. According to oral tradition, she is the lost soul of a woman who lost her kids and wanders around trying to find them, and is scaring anyone who sees her or hears her with her horrible cry. A sad story, a horror story of lovesickness and treason that has been passed on from generation to generation. This legend has many different versions depending on the region you are in, but they all agree on something. She always shows up near the water and her cries are deafening. One of the most popular versions tells the story of a beautiful young woman of humble origins. She was the lover of a nobleman. For a time, they were very happy and had three kids together. But one day, he left her without explanations of any type. Soon after, she found out he was marrying somebody else. This destroyed the heart of this beautiful woman. Heartbroken, she decided to take revenge on him in the cruelest way she could think of. One night, she woke the kids up and took them for a walk near the river, close to their house. Blind by anger, a terrible rage possessed her and she could feel all the love she felt for them turn into hate. She drowned them until they were all dead. She suddenly reacted and when she realized what she had just done, she started running desperately into the river until her body was completely covered with water. She made that terrible cry and disappeared. From that moment on, La Llorona became a wandering soul. She walks around the streets looking for her lost kids, crying and yelling, hence her name. People say La Llorona attracts kids who misbehave, so she can take them to the river as an offering to be forgiven. She seduces adults with her beauty to take revenge on the one man that betrayed her. But when they try to take her veil off, they discover her white gaunt face and her eyes trying to dig in the deepest parts of the soul to trap them in her cries. There are many people that say they have seen or heard her cries. Her story still scares little boys and girls, but also adults. The origins of La Llorona are not very clear. Ancient cultures believed in ghosts that appear next to rivers. Some historians think that in Mexico, the origin of La Llorona can be related to the Tihuacoati, goddess of the Mexicas half-woman and half-snake. According to the legend, she comes from the water of the Lake Texcoco to cry for her children. And even though in Mexico La Llorona is one of the most important figures in popular culture, there are many other countries with a similar legend. In Chile, she is known as La Pucuyen, a soul in purgatory believed to cry eternally because her kids were taken from her arms when they were very little. This ghost can only be seen by people when they are really close to dying, as well as people with special abilities. In Colombia, they talk about the Tarumama, the wandering ghost that walks around the valleys and mountains, close to rivers and lakes, dressed with a black robe that covers all her body down to her heels. Her face is a terrifying skull, and in her eye sockets she has two incandescent balls. She carries the dead body of a baby and she cries tears of blood. These are only some examples. In other countries such as Venezuela, Uruguay, Argentina, Panama, El Salvador, Honduras, España or Costa Rica, they also have the legend that tells the story of the ghostly presence of this wandering young woman. Tic-tackers, do you also have the story of the Llorona in your country? What other popular legends would you like us to talk about? Leave a comment and let us know! Today we will talk about the Patasola, the spirit of a betrayed and terribly martyred woman who wanders around, frightening all those who cross her path. Those who have seen her affirm that she is a beautiful woman who attracts unsuspecting walkers with her seductive voice to make them fall in love. She leads them deep into the forest and once there she transforms into a horrifying creature. 
Her large tigress eyes, with which she can see between mountains and bewitch anyone who looks directly at her, turn a deep red. From her disproportionate mouth come countless sharp teeth and two long fangs. And the ugliness of her face is only hidden under a matted hair that partially covers her face. But the most curious thing about her appearance is that the patatola, as her name in Spanish suggests, has only one leg. A long hoof with nails, like claws, that she uses to move quickly propelled by her long arms, as if they were crutches. In some stories, snakes of different colors come out of her abundant hair and her neck and arms are adorned with all kinds of amulets. There are several versions of the origin of this legend, but one of the best known tells the story of a man married to a beautiful woman who, consumed by jealousy, ended up murdering her. The boss of the farm where the married man worked as a peasant wanted a wife. He decided to go to the river and choose the most beautiful washerwoman to court her. And so he did, unaware that the youngest and most beautiful woman was the wife of one of his workers. The feeling was mutual and soon they began to see each other in secret. They say that one day, the peasant told his sorrows to a companion. His wife was no longer the same, she felt cold and distant. The friend, who knew what was happening, told him that his wife was seeing the boss. The man, distrustful, prepared a ruse to find out if it was true because he could not believe it. That day, he told his wife that he wouldn't be home until late, and when night fell, he hid in the bushes to spy on her. His wife, seeing that he didn't arrive, went to the farm to look for the boss. The husband decided to wait for her at home, bundled up his children and went to bed. At dawn, he heard his wife return and ask her where she came from. She answered naturally, from washing some clothes. The next day, he invented again that he had to go out and that he wouldn't sleep at home. That night, he watched from his hidden place as the boss visited her and saw how she threw herself into his arms, kissing him. The man, in a fit of rage, grabbed a machete and killed the boss by decapitating him while he was still in the arms of his wife. She screamed in horror with her face covered in blood. She tried to run away in terror, but her husband threw another machete blow that left her without one of her legs. The lovers bled to death at the same time. The man entered prison, but when he managed to get out, he returned to take his children and set fire to the house. Since then, they say that the woman's soul wanders through farms, forests, and jungles, crying out in pain for the loss of her love and her children. She wanders possessed with eyes full of hate and regret, hopping with her single leg in search of prey to devour, drawing blood with her fangs. It is said that this character was invented by jealous husbands to instill fear in their wives and thus prevent them from being unfaithful one day. And that in reality, the Patasola is the protector of nature and animals that attacks humans who enter the forest to destroy them. How can we defend ourselves against this fearsome creature? One of the options is to surround yourself with domestic animals because they immediately flee when they perceive the Patasola, warning of danger. There are also rituals to drive it away, such as pronouncing these words out loud. Patasola, patasola, I'm sorry you live alone, but if you dare to attack me, I'll cut off your crutches. Better go and pack your bags. Some peasants place mirrors in the houses in case this monstrous woman appears. Thus, she will contemplate her face in the reflection and will come out horrified to hide and lament her terrible condition. <gasps> Remember, if you're alone in the middle of the night near a forest or jungle, be careful if you see a figure or if you hear a terrible cry approaching. Today, we bring you the legend of the Whistler, or the Silbon, the dark specter of a man who is condemned to wander eternally through the plains and forests, with an old and ragged sack on his shoulder, in which he carries human bones. This cursed spirit is described by many as an elongated giant up to six meters tall, that stands out from the trees wearing a straw hat. It creeps forward emitting an eerie, disturbing whistle that sings musical notes up to D down to G. They say that this frightening sound is a harbinger of death. If you listen closely to the whistle, you should not worry. It means that the whistler is very far away and you aren't in danger. But if you hear it from afar, be careful. It may be too late for you. The legend is believed to date back to the 19th century, and there are many versions of the story. In one of the most widespread, the Whistler was a man who lived with his parents and grandparents and used to go to places whistling, hence his name. 
As a child, he was raised as a spoiled child who spoiled him in everything, he screamed and cried until he always got what he wanted. They say that one day, the boy sitting at the table despised the food that his mother had prepared for him, saying that he wanted to eat roast deer. His distraught father promised he would get one for dinner that night. So the boy and his father went to the forest, but after several hours of hunting, the father found no prey and returned empty-handed. The young man, hungry, was so enraged that he murdered his father in a fit of rage. And with the hunting knife, he took on his entrails to have something to eat. When he got home, he put the entrails on the table and asked his mother to cook them. She, somewhat distrustful, began to ask questions, and when she realized that it was her husband's guts that she was cooking, she panicked. <coughs> the grandfather, who had found out about the parasite, decided to teach his wicked grandson a lesson. He tied him to a tree and beat his back with lashes until blood flowed profusely. Then he powered lemon and ahi, a spice sauce, on the wound so that he felt the unbearable burning. The young man was banished and cursed and condemned to wander until the end of time by sending the dog Tureko or devil's dog after him to chase him. That is why the barking of the dogs, the ahi, and the whips usually scare the whistler. Since then, he wanders through forests and plains with his characteristic whistle and the filthy sack where he kept the bones of his father's corpse. They say that he stops at the entrance of houses to count the bones in the sack one by one. If the people in the house manage to see or hear him, nothing will happen to them. But if nobody notices his presence, the next morning a member of the family will appear dead and add his bones to his collection. Sometimes he appears in shadow form to attack drunks and womanizers. To the first, he sucks the liquor out of their bodies through the navel. And to the womanizers, he tears them to pieces by ripping out their bones. This legend is also present in Colombian folklore, and in some regions it is known by the name of the Silvador or the Chiflon. The version in Colombia talks about the soul in pain of a womanizer who died alone and simply seeks the company of someone to ride a horse. Although other more sinister stories tell that someone close to whom he hears his whistle will die. If the whistle is high-pitched, it will be a woman, and if it is low, a man. There are many who claim to have seen the whistler in summer, sitting on tree trunks resting while playing with dust in his hands. But it is above all in the rainy season that he's hungry for death. Keep your eyes open, tic tackers, and if you hear some kind of creepy whistle in the distance, be alert. Because the whistler may be nearby. It is said that the bombero is a rather short, stocky, and attractive being, with hairy hands and feet that prevent his footsteps from being heard. He looks ragged and often wears a straw hat and a bag over his shoulder. He lives in the woods or in abandoned houses. He walks at night, traveling everywhere. He announces his presence with a high-pitched whistle in the middle of the silent night. Also, if you hear the birds chirping when the sun goes down, it is a way of knowing that the bombero is very close. It is said that if his whistle is imitated, the bombero can answer in a maddening way. In order not to offend him, you should never whistle late at night or say his name out loud, because this makes him angry. He will take revenge by bothering. He is normally a mischievous goblin full of witticisms. He can do little misdeeds like letting animals out of the pen, stealing eggs or scaring horses, but he can also become very dangerous. He likes to throw stones and scare people to death. He can make himself invisible when he wants and let himself be felt by a touch of his hairy hands, which produce a deep chill. He can also slip through the narrowest spaces, go through a keyhole, run on all fours, imitate the song of birds, especially nocturnal ones, the hissing of men and snakes, and the howling of animals. The bombero can become your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on how we behave. The person who wants to have him on his side has to make offerings of tobacco, honey, or cane. Generally, people who work in the fields ask him for favors such as making crops grow abundantly or taking care of farm animals. But you have to be careful, after asking him for a favor, you must never forget to make the same offering every night for 30 days. Because if you forget, you will awaken his fury. If the bombero becomes your enemy, you are exposed to innumerable dangers within the forest, because it will always try to trick us into getting lost in the thicket. Sometimes he causes a strange and dangerous accidents inside the ranches. 
Although modern versions usually speak of the short bombero, there are also stories of the bombero genius protector of birds in the jungle, who was presented to hunting children as a very tall and thin man. What all the legends agree on is that the main functions of the bombero is to take care of the mountains and wild animals. This spirit of the forest gets angry if any hunter kills more prey than he will consume. If that happens, he transforms into any animal or plant and with entanglements induces the culprit to go into the depths of the mountain where he gets lost. In addition, in some places it is known as the person responsible for the birth of extramarital children. The goblin arrives at night at the house where there are women alone and if they don't give them a cigarette and a little wine, just touching their bellies makes them pregnant. The Pomero has various names depending on the region, such as Cuero Uyara, which means owner of the sun, Cara y Fiare, lord of the night, Pomberito, Pirawe, hairy feet, Cho Pombe. Many witnesses claim to have seen the forest sprite in the present day. Remember that you shouldn't abuse nature if you don't want to make him angry and let him release his wrath against you. And if you make a deal with him, don't forget to keep it. Galicia, located in the northwest of Spain, a magical and mysterious land is known for being a pilgrimage destination where, for centuries, mythological creatures have coexisted with its history. One of the most famous and dark myths is that of the Santa Compaña, in English, the Holy Company. Many are the testimonies about this legend of Galician tradition that ensures that when midnight falls, a group of hooded ghostly beings roam the forest and towns as an omen of death. This army of wandering souls with cold hands and bare feet wears resplendent robes. They are distributed in rows carrying a light that gives off the smell of wax and circulate like spiritual entities floating in the air, without showing their faces. Among these specters, the Stadea stands out, larger, and they are preceded by a mortal holding a cross. In their wake, the animals flee everywhere and there is a sepulchral silence that gives rise to the tinkling of a bell, the rattling of chains and the prayers of voices from beyond the grave. According to what people say, they usually appear at crossroads, which is why in the towns of Galicia, there are protective crosses called cruceiros, stone monuments of a religious nature that consist of a post supporting a cross. In certain versions, the Santa Compaña carries a coffin containing the body of the one who is at the gates of death. He could be the person who witnesses the apparition or a close relative. The penitent souls carry the bones of the burning dead that after their journey appear abandoned outside the cemeteries. Careful! If the Santa Compaña crosses your path, you must serve them by leading the procession carrying the heavy cross on your shoulder in a cauldron of holy water. The one who serves will not remember anything of the course of the night, but will feel increasingly weak and pale until becoming ill for unknown reasons. He will be doomed to wander restlessly sleepwalking through the night until another person crosses his path and can hand over the cross to pass the baton to him. Other stories say that not everyone has the ability to see them or feel their icy presence. Bedoiros is the name of those who have this faculty because during the baptism they were mistakenly anointed with oil for the dead. There are also dates where there are more chances of sight in it, such as the night of All Saints' Day and St. John's Day. And how can we protect ourselves from this entourage of souls? Some of the best known rituals are touching or getting on a cruzeiro, drawing a circle on the ground around oneself, lying face down, crossing oneself and wearing an amulet such as garlic or a beetle horn. Under no circumstances should we accept the light carried by the specters because we automatically become one of them. The origin of this legend is pagan as an act of collecting souls. However, it was later Christianized as a way to punish the dead for some misdeed they committed while alive. Despite being a deeply rooted belief in Galician culture, this figure is also linked to the tradition of other areas, such as Asturias, Castilla y León, and Extremadura, where it takes names such as Huestia, La Visión, Gente de Muerte, or Estantigua. This figure has had an influence in literature, television, cinema, with movies like El Bosque Animado and O Apóstolo, and music groups like Mago de Oz or Los Suaves. 
Is the sun the company of reality or just a belief? We can affirm that it is a myth of oral tradition related to the ancestral fear of death, which is still alive today. A way of responding to the unknown and incomprehensible by human beings. For those who have witnessed its appearance, it is as real as life itself. So if you go through a forest at night, try to keep your eyes wide open. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!